My name is Morgan. I majored in public health in undergrad and I will be starting medical school next fall. Today I want to talk about an article recently published in JAMA that has generated a lot of negativity. It's entitled, A Bold Response to the COVID-19 Pandemic, Medical Students, National Service, and Public Health. The authors are Howard Voucher, a pediatrician at Boston University and the current editor-in-chief at JAMA, and Dr. Joshua Scharfstein, a pediatrician who has worked in public health, including stints at the FDA, and is currently a professor at John Hopkins. So the gist of the proposal outlined in this article is that medical students like me, who were supposed to start in fall 2020, would be placed on deferment for a year. And they would have, and during this deferment, they would have the option of being part of our nation's COVID-19 response. It would be one month of online training, and then these students would be deployed to local and state health departments. I'm very thankful that this idea hasn't seemed to gain a lot of traction. Before I respond line by line, uh, here are my initial thoughts. Um, there is a physician shortage in America and delaying entry into residency won't help that. In fact, it could make it worse, um, especially since the pandemic has already killed and disabled physicians across the country. And we're going to need all hands on deck for our next pandemic like this. I personally don't want to wait another year. I've worked really hard to get here and I'm just, finally ready to start. I'm in my late 20s, so postponing the chance to earn a lot of money is going to be bad for my overall retirement and financial security. And I online, I've seen this sentiment echoed by m zeros who may be younger but come from low-income backgrounds. So now onto my line by line response, I figured I'd just go through the article and bring attention to the parts that I disagree with and state why. Okay, so first paragraph. The US should consider spending the first year of medical school for year one and giving the incoming 20,000 medical students the opportunity to join a national service program for public health. Honestly, if it's not mandatory, I don't think a lot of people will say sign up. It's a high risk um, position, especially if we consider, continue to have these PPE shortages and if this student is at risk for bad COVID outcomes or their loved ones are. Personally, I like my doctor job and I would definitely stay with that instead of joining this national service program just because the, of the pay and my benefits. Now onto the VEG logistics. The program should begin at the start of July. Incoming medical students should spend a month in online training on infectious disease epidemiology, infectious disease control in high risk settings and out response. In August, they should deploy to state and local health departments to enhance the capacity to support a test, trace, track, and quarantine strategy. Make sure we have this clear. In two and a half months, the federal government would need to secure funding, have medical schools agree to cancel classes or force them to through legal channels, recruit students, develop the curriculum, and of course, you know, the online infrastructure needed to push that out. Identify health department, even in the best of days, program implementation takes a lot of time. And I don't think 2.5 months is going to be enough. If the magnitude that they propose. And is one month of training really enough? Um, in comparison to MPH where people learn these skills, takes one to two, usually takes one to two years. Okay, PMUTs are smart, but most of us majored in basic science, which doesn't really provide relevant knowledge and experience for this type of work besides maybe a statistics class. I majored in public health and my coursework barely scratched the surface of these topics. And now another part of the logistics of course is funding. The federal government should fund this project as a national service effort with salary for students and health coverage. If it's similar to the paltry stipend and appalling health insurance that I received while I was in AmeriCorps, I'm definitely not interested. And I feel like a, a lot of other students are going to feel the same way because of the long-term financial consequences, especially when considering they could be exposed to COVID. The next part is the first time where they really acknowledge that maybe it could be more than M0 is responding. It could be part of a larger initiative to engage other students, including those in nursing and public health, as well as out-of-work community members in the national response. Like, if we look at the numbers, unemployment is a huge 
problem now and it's probably gonna be a huge problem in the next couple months when they propose rolling this program out. So I think it would make more sense to hire the people who may have more skills and financial ob obligations as opposed to a younger person who is just starting their career. One thing they don't really talk about is where would these where would these medical students go? Would they serve their local communities or be sent all over the country? Especially since the response need is not equally distributed throughout our nation. And this is a federal program, but ultimately a local effort. So it should really be led by the people that live there. This next point is more about like why they believe this should be done. Taking this bold step is justified on health and economic grounds. State localities have few resources available to stop community spread other than closing businesses, curtailing large gatherings, and schooling at home. So this proposal assumes that we will have enough PPP testing and treatment capacity by the time August rolls around. Um, honestly, given the federal response so far, I have my doubts that that would happen. And without these capacities and supplies, you're just going to make more people cannon fodder. There are more exposures, more transmissions, and ultimately more deaths if you just have people sitting around trying to help, but ultimately just being vectors. The next couple of points are what M zeros would be doing during the actual response. One urgent task is to implement rapid testing that informs community surveillance, dot, 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 dot. Medical students should help ensure the implementation of critical preventive policies and join teams that swiftly and aggressively respond to infections that occur, dot, dot, dot. Skipping a lot of, over a bunch of stuff. A third rule for medical students should be to staff community call centers that offer guidance and services to individuals with symptoms of or exposure to COVID. Um, once again, it goes back to the fact that M0 aren't exceptionally qualified. In some cases, like at the call center, they could be required to make clinical judgments. So in that case, we might be very unqualified. So the next point is saying that there have been things like this before, so we should seriously consider this. There is a precedent for such a massive mobilization to address infectious diseases. To reduce the spread of Ebola, Liberia mobilized thousands of caseworkers. China reportedly used 18,000 public health workers in Wuhan alone. So I looked into this and didn't find any people being mobilized simply because they were about to start medical school. I know that currently enrolled medical students, especially M3s and M4s, have been used in our nation's COVID response. And I remember hearing about medical students doing outreach and education during past Ebola outbreaks in Africa. They did link to a New York Times article and when I looked at that, it looked like Wuhan used volunteers for a variety of tasks and they were from all walks of life. So they weren't just science or health students. Next part of the article discusses how they can mitigate the long-term consequences of delaying a class of medical students. Mobilizing future physicians now will complicate medical education in the short term and the medical for workforce four years from now. For example, because if you're students means less tuition revenue, the federal government should compensate medical schools for a portion of this lost income. It just goes back to the fact that that does not seem like a strong incentive for medical schools and that's just more money, quite frankly, the federal government does not have. In July 2025, there will be a gap in medical students available for internships and in 2026, there will be an excess number of graduates for available residency positions. So they propose early graduation to highly capable medicine students and graduate medical education should make adjustments to re reduce the reliance on first year residents. The early grads would still deal with a position shortage when they apply, it would just be earlier. And there's really no incentive to reduce the reliance on first year residents hospitals would probably have to hire more mid-levels that would get paid more than a first-year resident. Like even if hospitals agreed to double their residency spots for a year, there are still issues. Um, so unless a hospital magically increases their patient volume and physical space, residents are going to have a lot less learning opportunities. And that could have some long-term consequences for quality of care in this country. And another problem that they acknowledge is that delaying medical 
school entry for a year would create this backlog. First year classes of medical students should be afforded the opportunity for national service before starting medical school, ideally in a broad range of health and services, social services. So they would just, sounds like they would just want to displace everyone. Everyone else, all the classes after that would also be delayed for a year. Um, like that long-term domino effect, that's gonna put a burden on medical schools. And people, pre-meds already have these opportunities to serve with organizations like AmeriCorps and the Jesuit Corps. And they can do this without disrupting their, their timeline. Um, a lot of people see this proposal as a way to source cheap labor, but ultimately it would just increase transmission in the community. Uh, pre-meds don't have experience. And a lot of people said that this proposal was out of touch, and that makes sense to me. A lot of medical students and residents already feel like cannon fodder because of the lack of PPP and consistent policy in response to COVID. So just like from my perspective, as someone with very limited public health experiences, this is what they could do instead. Create um, centralized training and then use grants to fund these positions at state and local health departments, either on their on their own or incorporated into AmeriCorps. You could recruit pre-health students who are planning to have a gap year. Um, a lot of them were planning to, probably planning to work in clinics and labs that are furloughed now. And then if, honestly, and if they really insist that it must be M0s, they should work on with medical schools for deferments and strong financial incentives. Ultimately, I think it's very telling that this proposal doesn't have a compelling argument to why it has to be new medical students. Honestly, the lack of justification makes me think that they view us as captive audience that can be coerced into becoming a cheap labor source. Like, don't get me wrong, pre-med students are very smart and hardworking, but so are many other Americans. It seems like there are a lot less painful ways to build a workforce in response to COVID that wouldn't require such a large burden on our infrastructure. So thank you for sticking around to the end of my first video. My comments were based on anecdotes and very limited research. So if you know something different, have heard something different, I would love to hear it in the comment box below. And thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you soon. Bye.